Hi, some of you have been asking how I create my YouTube videos. How do I get the content into a video format and into a video editor? So I'm going to show you one of the ways that I do this. There are many, many ways that you can do it. Um, this is the way that I created the Orange is the New Black video. I have a couple of other techniques I use uh, with different media formats, but I will start with this one and then possibly um, do some other ones. So one disclaimer at the beginning, this is a quick and dirty video. It is not super pretty. I put it together in less than a day. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of how to do what I do. Okay. I'm going to walk you through what you need to use this technique. First, you're going to need a set-top streaming device. I use a PS3. However, uh, Xbox and Roku and some other manufacturers also make set-top boxes. The reason you need a set-top box is you need uh, video and audio out. So something like an Amazon Fire Stick is not going to work. Secondly, you're going to need a subscription to whatever content you want to record. For example, Netflix. Third, you're going to need a video capture device. I use the Hopeg PBR2GE. It works with both Windows and Mac. Uh, it also works really well with my PlayStation 3, but uh, feel free to research your own and see what works for you and with your set-top box. Next, you'll need a computer, either Mac or Windows. Uh, either will work as long as it uh, works with your equipment. You'll need some kind of editing software. I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Other people use things like Sony Vegas Pro, etc. There are a number of different options that you can use. So let me walk you through now kind of a close-up look at each of my pieces of hardware. Um, right now, actually, you can see my whole setup um, but I'll go zoom in and show you each individual piece. So this is my streaming device. I'm using a PlayStation 3 and let me show you the back of it. Okay, so this is the back of my PS3 device um, and if you can see right here it says AV Multi Out. So basically that is going to be both your video and your audio uh, and it's component video coming out of the PS3. Okay now the second piece of equipment is a video capture device. The one that I have is called a Hopeg. I'll show you the full name right here. It's the HD PVR2 GE Plus. Uh, it works with both Mac and Windows. I'm actually going to be using a Windows machine, but this shows you it works with Mac. Uh, there are a number of different video capture devices out there that you can get. I researched a bunch of them, and this is the one that worked for me. But feel free to do your own research and make sure it's going to work with whatever your streaming device is. Um, you're going to have to use a set-top box streaming device for this particular technique because you're going to need um, the AV and video output that I showed you before. So I'm going to show you the back of the Hopeg. This is the component video and the audio that's coming out of my PS3 and it's going into my recording device. Uh, then there is an HDMI, which is coming out of my recording device and going into my television set. And a USB, which is coming out of my recording device and going into my PC. And I'll show you the PC next. All right, this is my PC setup. Here you're seeing the USB that's coming in out of my recording device, the Hopeg. Uh, the Hopeg comes with uh, Hopeg capture software. So you don't have to buy any additional software uh, to capture it. It also comes with all of the cords that I've shown you so far, so I didn't have to buy anything additional. Okay, you can see on my computer screen where the 
Hopig Capture Software is showing what's on the television set, and I'm going to zoom back in a minute so that you can see both screens at the same time. But first, I'm going to go ahead and start the recording here. And then I'm going to start the playing on the television set. Three. Karen will have spending the day with her home prisoners. Now, what is recorded on the PC is just a second behind the television, but your recording is going to be fine. There's just a lag between when it shows up on the television and when it's recorded. Okay, now I am going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm working on a Windows machine with Windows 8.1 and it's a laptop. It's a HP Envy with quad i7 core Intel chips and 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte hard drive. If you're going to do videos of any size, you're going to want as much RAM, as much space, and the best processors that you can find and as many of them as you can get. Alright, so I'm going to import the clip that we just captured. So you can see the clip there. I'm going to <coughs> drag it over here to my timeline. Try that again, shall we? Alright, I'm going to drag it over here to my timeline. And when I do that, I drag both the video and the audio. Most of the time I don't use the audio because I'm laying in a music track behind it, which is what I'm going to show you here real quick. So I'm just going to mute this audio track and leave the video track on. Okay, now I'm just going to go grab Go to my media browser here and grab some music. Alright. So there I have my music file, so I can just drag that and add it to my timeline as well. Now, with a little bit of adjustment, I can kind of sync up my audio and my video. Now the beginning of this video has a little bit of just dead space because I didn't start recording. I started recording before I started playing. So I'll just kind of whip through here until I start to get to my actual video. Uh, and I can clip it down to there to start. And then I can look at the end of my video here, if it'll cooperate, which it doesn't seem to want to do. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of find where that video ends. And I had extra space at the end because I didn't end it right on time either. So 
I've kind of just shortened up this video clip here. So let me just play this through and see where it sits. So that's not bad for a first start. I might want to tweak uh, the position of everything, but you can kind of get an idea. Um, basically what you would then do is you would want to import additional video clips. Uh, and it takes a lot of playing around to get them to work with the music. Um, especially at first, expect to spend a lot of time kind of finessing everything. To be honest, I usually do this part of the job on my Mac because I like it better and it's actually more powerful. Um, but you can do it on a Windows machine and I wanted to show it to you on a Windows machine because I know a lot of people out there have Windows. So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, how to put something together. Now I don't want to go in depth and give you a step-by-step -step tutorial of Adobe Premiere Pro um, because there are a lot of different editing softwares out there and you may have something else, you may like something else uh, I know some people have Sony Vegas Pro and there's also the Apple Final Cut Pro as well as Apple iMovie which is not what I would consider professional level but it comes with a Macintosh, so if you have a Macintosh, you should have iMovie. And if you're just starting out and want to play around with something, iMovie's not a bad place to start. There's also Avid Media Composer, which is very expensive, definitely professional level software. So you might want <coughs> so you might not want to start there. But if you do want more guidance in how to actually work with your software. Let me just pull a browser over here. All you have to do is go to YouTube and type in something like Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial. And you will get hundreds of results of tutorials that you can watch for free on YouTube to learn how to do this. Uh, you can do it for other programs too. Type in Sony Vegas Pro. Again, hundreds of videos that will teach you how to play around with Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, if you want more in-depth education, you can go to lynda.com this is a paid service, but they do have hundreds and hundreds of video training materials on every kind of software. So you can invest in your education there if you would like to. All right. One final thing I wanted to mention. Obviously, uh, when I'm recording content like this, it is the property of the content provider, in this case Netflix. They have all copyright rights to all of their content. Now, YouTube allows us to put what we like to call fan videos up on YouTube because they have different contractual agreements with different content providers where they get some of the advertising revenue uh, and or in the case of music they either get advertising revenue or they have a little ad there that you can click on to go buy the music so basically your ability to put these things on YouTube is completely at YouTube's discretion and it can change at any time uh, I try and keep my videos short, under five minutes for the most part. 
when I'm using other people's content and I'll usually check around before I make a video to see if other people have been able to use the content in the song without any problems. But know that at any point in time YouTube can pull your video down. I've had it done to me, other people have had it done to them, there's nothing you can do about it, you do not own the content. So that being said, um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, leave me comments and let me know what you thought. I'll try and do another one that just uses desktop capture software. That's another way that I create videos. But I wanted to show you how I created the one, just the new black video first. Alright, thanks so much. Talk to you soon.